in today's class we are going to continue the computers subject in today's class we discuss about the chapter operating system in previous classes we have seen the architecture of the computer in architecture we have seen input central processing output central processing unit and output section when it comes to input and output central processing unit we have two different components one is hardware component second one is software component when it comes to hardware component we have different types of input devices and output devices this is with respect to hardware when it comes to software we have seen different type of softwares one is which takes care of the system needs because to function input devices output devices connecting input and output devices with the computer you require some kind of instructions these instructions are taken care by a set of instructions called program called system software one of the system software is operating system if we see this here if you take this types of software system software application software system software which takes care of input output devices this hardware really need to be functioned if we want to give input data and get the output information we need some kind of additional application softwares where we users are comfortable with uh, performing certain task that's why two types of software system software application software in yesterday's class we have seen this operating system is one example of system software device drivers language translators like assemblers interpreters compilers are examples of softwares for language translators second type application software general purpose software specific purpose suppose if you create a reservation system for railways in fact whatever exam you are going to write every exam is having their own websites that website is a specific purpose application there every student will give the basic details and the concerned organization send the hall tickets for the examination it conduct the examination this is done through a called software called application software specific purpose for this examination but upsc means upsc specific purpose when it comes to general purpose it can be microsoft word everyone user every user can whoever operating computer can use powerpoint for example this is a powerpoint it's a kind of software application software so likewise here when it comes to system software operating system is very very essential this has revolutionized the usage of the computer now if you see in this format in this diagram you can have some kind of idea how hardware and software perform interact if you consider this is hardware you can see this is a hardware now this hardware interact with system software and on top of the system software application softwares will function system software is very big one in this operating system is one example different drivers one example translators another example so you have to see operating system is a software where in the overall architecture in which location operating system is operating the functionality of operating system when it comes to application softwares internet browsers chrome safari examples of internet browsers databases mysql mongodb sql microsoft microsoft databases so likewise databases computer games additional applications 
this is how you should have some kind of idea in which part of the architecture operating system performs. Now, if we see the definition, what is operating system? In the definition wise, it is a collection of, in simple term, it is a collection of software. In yesterday's class, we have seen the difference between hardware and software. Hardware means which we can see and touch it, but whereas software, we cannot touch it. That is set of instruction, set of programs. So software is a set of computer programs and associated documentation and data collectively called one software. So operating system is a collection of software. When it comes to computer program, it is a set of instruction. Computer program is set of instructions in a compute programming language for computer to execute. This is how computer programs are one of the component of software. Software is a big term. Computer program is one of the components, one of the components of computer. So software, if you take, it contains computer programs. It may contain documentation. It can contain data. So likewise, different parts are there within software. Set of instructions called computer program. And the set of such programs, one software, and operating system is one example of software. It manages, the fundamental purpose of this is it manages computer hardware resources and provides common services for the computer programs. For other programs also, for the hardware also, some kind of integration is required. That integration which connects hardware and with the user, hardware with the other applications, software to software application, all these aspects are done by this common platform called operating system. It acts as an interface between the user and the computer hardware. It is a low-level software. It is an example of system software, which works on the computer hardware. This is, for example, in microcomputers. In the first class itself, we have seen in 19, up to 1950s, computers were equipped with uh, huge vacuum tubes. That's why the size of the computer was very big. And by 1970s, transistors came. Transistor is a small equipment, electronic device. It has revolutionized the computer capability, computing power. As a result of transistor, the size of the computer became very small, very, very small. That's why the computers which emerged out of this technology, even the name also called microcomputer. Microcomputer. So 1970s have seen the microcomputer revolution because of transistor. That is microcomputer revolution. Once hardware-wise, when the microcomputers became very small, computer system itself became very small, now you need a kind of a system or application or software, that software will take care of the needs of the users, like common users. That is how the operating system revolution also started and it has changed the face of the computer industry itself. This we have seen, this also we have seen. If we see a little bit history, this is how it, we will get a definite idea about how computers have changed. Now this operating system, now you can see the computer evolution itself, first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth to fifth generation likewise. In the first generation, vacuum tubes, huge in nature, huge, very large. And later, transistor came. Because of the transistor, micro, computers emerged. The size became very small. Earlier, now even to run these computers also, you need some kind of 
operating system. To run these computers also, you need some kind of operating system. The basic architecture is input, central processing unit, output. You need some kind of software which integrate this hardware. And this is how in 1950s, operating systems have been evolving through the years. In 1950s, computers were limited to running one program at a time, like a calculator. That time, operating system was designed, but only one task at a time. If you see today, we are using operating system, whether it is Apple computer or Microsoft Windows, any computer, you can use multiple programs. For example, you can browse in Chrome also, you can open Microsoft Word document also, PowerPoint also, Notepad also, some other gaming application also. You can do n number of applications on the same. But in 1950s only, if you want to run the game, you can run the game. And at that time, games were also not that much. Only one like calculator, for example. Today, calculator is a very, very small application in our computer system. But that time itself was a very big program. Like that, if you want to run the calculator, only you can run one program at a time. You cannot do much. That was the beginning of operating system. But later in the following decades, computers have began to include more and more software programs. So more and more instruction. Simply you can say, computers started taking more instructions at a time. Initially in 1950s, one instruction at a time. Later, computers started taking more and more instructions at a time. The central processing unit started taking more and more. So it's like this. Central processing unit, input, output. So this is where memory unit, control unit, arithmetic logic unit. This is the fundamental architecture. So as long as you are preparing for computers, you need to remember this architecture. One instruction means from memory it takes one instruction, this arithmetic and logical operation, one instruction at a time. As the size of the now, you have to imagine vacuum tubes, letter transistors, the size of the computer also coming down. It doesn't mean the number of instructions when the size is coming down, it doesn't mean it is taking only less number of instructions. No, as the size became small, that means transistors capability increased in the less space. As a result, more and more instructions started, computers have started taking. The first operating system was created by General Motors in 1956 to run a single IBM mainframe computer. Its name was the IBM 704. It was the beginning of operating system. IBM was the first computer manufacturer to develop operating systems and distribute them in its computers in 1960s. Today we are seeing Apple computers, Dell computers, various other companies are coming up with computers. Earlier, IBM was the leader. Next one. This is how in 1950s, in the mainframe, in the IBM mainframe computer, it was very huge computer. To run those computers, General Motors have created one operating system. But the real transition started in 1969 when Unix. It's a system, it is a operating system. It is a family of multitasking. Now you see, earlier operating system, only one task at a time. When Unix came, multitasking. Now we reached 1969 also. In 1969, what is the evolution? This is 1940s and 50s. Now by 1960s, transistors also came. And by 1970s, microcomputer revolution itself started. That means before 1970, mini computers started manufacturing. But in 1970s, more and more, it became very popular. Revolution started after that. Around this time, Unix operating system emerged. 
this is having the capability this operating system is having the capability to run multiple tasks at a time it's a family of multitasking multi user computer in the same computer multiple users i can also work you can also work some other person also work multi user single computer multiple users and now you need some kind of instructions to this algorithmic you should be able to differentiate if multiple users are there that means now you see user 1 user 2 user 3 so what does it mean user 1 is giving some input it is performing something and showing output to user 1 same computer same box user 2 also using again doing performance and showing some kind of output to the user number 2 user number 3 some other person can use it again different performance user 3 now you see same architecture same computer user 1 is giving input user 1 is seeing the output user 2 is running the input and seeing the output using the giving the input and getting the output that mean there must be something that is happening here which is differentiating which is differentiating multiple tasks this is called multi task and multi user many many users many tasks multi user and multi task and this is where the unix started has revolutionized unix now on top of unix many applications started emerging out of it here just i need to give one additional extra now these are the two people which developed in bell labs whose development started in 1969 at the bell labs bell labs that was a company alexander graham bell the in our history we study the founder the who is the inventor of telephone modern telephone means alexander graham bell we trace this company bell labs to that alexander graham bell bells lab bell labs in 1925 at and t has affinity with bell labs they have started research center at by these two people dennis ritchie and ken thompson these are the two people the person who is sitting he is ken thompson dennis ritchie this is how in the initial phases how computer looked how unix operating system they were working on now can have some idea how in the initial stages in this is in 1969 and it is it became open source later it became uni open source open source means we have seen yesterday different type of softwares some are proprietary some are open source if it is a open source what happens many people can keep working on this so whatever computer whatever program they are doing that was released for the public public can see the original code they can improve upon it and they can perform whatever they want to do additions deletions everything they can do that is what source code public open source software when it comes to proprietary that means only certain company or only one individual person or company can have the patent rights this became open source this is how 1969 on one hand now from that time you need to have some kind of idea like uh, how hardware wise evolution is taking place how software wise evolution is taking place so this is how on one hand evolution hardware wise evolution is taking place software wise evolution is taking place vacuum tubes transistors softwares now unix one operating system emerged one interesting fact here so vacuum tube moved to transistor here unix operating system emerged multitasking multi user here some kind of interesting fact is the same bell labs it was the bell labs where unix developed 
Interesting fact is, this is the same lab which also worked on transistor. So this is what I would see. You can see this transistor. It is the how transistor looks like. The first working device was a point contact transistor invented in 1947 by physicist, these people, at Bell Labs. Do you see? In 1947 itself, when India got independence, transistor was invented in same Bell Labs after almost 20 years where Unix also came. And for these people, even Nobel Prize also was awarded. 1956, Nobel Prize in Physics. Now you can see, in 1947, they invented it. By 1956, you can see, 1950s itself, the impact of transistors started seeing. That is why, in 1956, Nobel Prize was also awarded. Transistors revolutionized the field of electronics and paved the way for smaller and cheaper. This is the main point, smaller and cheaper. Small computers as well as cheaper computers like radios, calculators, computers. This is how in radios, computers, these transistors became very small. It has taken, it was taking the less amount of space also, more amount of efficiency also. That is where it has transformed the electronic industry itself, the software industry itself. So here, Bell Labs. You need to have just idea. I brought this point just to have some idea about the same Bell Labs which was working on transistors, which has revolutionized the electronic industry, computer industry later. Unix operating system also came. Now, 1984, that was 1969. In 1970s, on top of Unix, many different people were started working. Now, on one hand, the computer hardware is transforming the hardware industry. More transistors, integrated circuits. Because of integrated circuits, the size of the computer itself is coming down. Huge computers to micro computers, very small computers. And as the Hardware industry is evolving and transforming. In this side, software industry is also transforming. Unix is one example. It started on top of Unix, 1969. And now, in 1970s, people are going to work. In 1970s, two examples I give, who has changed the shape of the computer industry, even today also ruling the industry. One example is Microsoft. It was, this company was founded in 1975. And another one is Apple. Apple is software company. It is having interest both in hardware also, software also. When it comes to Microsoft, mainly it was focusing on the software. When it comes to Apple, it has the combination of both hardware and software, 1976. Now you can see, in 1970s, what is the context, how these companies are emerging. If you consider even, if today's uh, com comparison, now artificial intelligence related companies will start emerging now. Because the trend has already started. Artificial intelligence companies, one after the other, we are going to see. And these companies are going to rule in the next decades. This is how the trend will change the nature of the industry itself. Now, artificial industry is about to emerge. In 1970s, software industry, because of revolutions in the hardware industry. On top of NX, now Apple has come up with classic Macintosh operating system. It's another operating system. It is the series of operating system. After 1984, so many versions, versions after the versions, they started releasing on the Macintosh family of personal computers. Macintosh by Apple computer from 1984 to up to 2001. This Macintosh operating system, simply Macintosh operating system, Mac OS. This Mac OS up to 2001, from 1984 to 2001, they continuously upgraded, upgraded, multiple versions released. Finally, in 
2001 they replaced mac os with uh, model ultimate final model that is upgraded model this is a kind of unix operating system mac os developed and marketed by apple computers in since 2001 so on top of unix on top of unix apple computers started working because they were having the affinity with both hardware industry and software industry they came up with the machintosh operating system this operating system worked on the apple computers it is the primary operating system for apple's mac computers on mac computers in the initial days this is how they looked this is how this on these type of computers machintosh mac os was there within the market of desktop and laptop computers it is the second most widely used desktop operating system after microsoft windows microsoft windows is the leader this is going to come after machintosh operating system this is 1985 now you can see in 1969 unix came in 1984 apple came in 1985 windows came so 1969 unix came on top of it these people were also working on top of it they came up with a graphical user interface we can see for example here if you see this is one example now you see this is how this is windows windows operating system how it looks earlier there was no such kind of user interface this called graphical user interface mouse keyboard this kind of new system and people can simply with mouse they can move and they can click and they can see so if i see like this and i can see multiple folders i can close it initially no touch initially mouse was there and today mouse plus touch by touching the screen we are able to operating so this is example of windows operating system in machintosh in apple computers machintosh mac os we call it that is a different feel only graphical user interface how smooth they are operating this is windows is the leader of the market in desktops when it comes to second place apple software in 1985 microsoft this is the first version of the microsoft the logo microsoft windows This is one of the most popular commercial operating system developed and marketed by Microsoft 1975. It was Microsoft was established in 1975. After 10 years, it has released Windows operating system. In 1991, another revolutionary operating system came that is Linux. This Linux after this 1991 Linux when it comes to apple software and windows operating system they are paid versions when it comes to linux it is unix based on top of unix only the most loved operating system first released in 1991 today it has 30 plus variants available like fedora now you can see on top of linux so many versions came so many operating systems came like this so many operating system after seeing this match how questions will be asked simple terms they will ask question which of the following is which of the following is now we can see is a variant of linux operating system questions can be asked like this 
Now all the computers we can, all the operating systems we can write like Mac OS, second one, Windows, Windows, third one, Fedora, D, none of the above. Which of the following is a variant of Linux operating system? Fedora. Macintosh is a different operating system. Windows is a different operating system. Linux is a different operating system. Unix is a different operating system. But on top of Linux, different versions came. Those are like this. Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora, many such things have come up. Linux, because of the popularity, so many such operating systems emerged. But the foundation is Linux operating system. Functions of operating system. This is broad way how to look. What they do, what Unix will do, what Windows will do, what Macintosh, Mac OS will do, what Linux will do means process management, I/O device management, file management, network management, memory management, secondary storage, security, command interpreter, control over system, job accounting, error detection and correction, coordination between other software and users. Don't worry about all of them. Simply have this idea. Already we have seen this architecture. This is how This is how, if you understand this architecture, whatever we are, whatever we are mentioning about operating system, you can simply have complete idea. In examination, they give multiple choice question. You can easily tick, put the tick mark. This is how integrating I/O devices means input output. Keyboard, you are typing on something, and it is visible on the monitor. What is happening in between? Operating system is operating. If you add something, new extra input, again, it connected with the central processing unit, memory unit, by the operating system. It is multitasking. When you are doing multiple tasks, you have to separate multiple tasks. You have to allocate operating system that takes care of which task is now first user is doing, second user is doing, third user is doing. You have to manage the processes. Likewise, it will take care of different uh, things. File management. Different files are there. In Windows, we have seen from desktop, you can open different folders. 
in each folder different files in each folder again subfolders when you create these folders they are there in the memory unit the ones we store in the memory we can navigate to these folders through operating system main memory management secondary storage management security management security management means if you type different password it should not be opening security management command interpreter system through command line also you can give when you go deeper you will have some idea control over the system performance error detection and correction coordination between other software and users multiple softwares can be installed in operating system how different users can use different softwares all these tasks taken care by operating system in today's class i try to explain how hardware industry is evolving how software industry is evolving when hardware when the size of the computers came drastically at a smaller size need of the software also increased as a result different operating systems emerged in 1969 unix came in 1984 mac os came in 1985 windows came in 1991 linux came when it comes to macintosh and windows they are licensed when it comes to linux it is open source operating system mobile operating system now once again we should go back to the computers hardware huge size to the micro computer size now this computer architecture came in the form of mobile also as a result now when mobiles are coming mobile related softwares also came so mobile is a computer the size in 1950s huge computers to mobile like small computer in our hand they also require software operating system one example is android so by this time internet has become very revolution in 1990s google came now google is one of the very powerful comp company software industries in the world android now android is run by google in science fiction what is the meaning of android means in science fiction it is a robot with a human appearance it appears like a human but it's a robot not human that's why you will see android image looks like this robot but with a human appearance android is a mobile operating system based on modified version of the linux kernel now you see how linux is transforming in 1990s linux came on top of linux like unix in 1969 unix came on top of unix people started building macintosh windows they have taken the inspiration from unix later linux came on top of linux now more and more applications are coming other open source software designed primarily for touch screen mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets this is one example like linux is having so many versions android versions also different versions for example every operating system has so many version window versions windows in 90s in windows 2007 windows 10 windows vista likewise multiple versions android versions when it comes to apple apple in 1970 80s computers they entered into different phone market tablet market different areas hardware once their mobiles came their mobile was containing ios ios formerly iphone os is a mobile operating system developed by apple computers exclusively for its hardware whatever apple hardware is there for their hardware this operating system is designed microsoft phone microsoft symbian and blackberry are other examples when it comes to windows windows also tried to use their own software on the mobiles but it did not work out it's a discontinued family of mobile operating systems developed by microsoft for smartphones in software soft uh, in mobile industry smartphone industry google and apple they are the two major contenders when it comes to the maintenance of operating system on mobiles when it comes to desktop when it comes to laptop windows is the leader likewise as the 
computing hardware industry is changing as the hardware is changing requirement of the software is also changing accordingly new operating systems emerged as a result input output central processing unit all these integration is always required to run any computer this is taken care by operating system when it comes to questions i have shown you which of the following is a variant of linux one type of question which of the following is a smartphone operating system android windows unix linux like that it will come android this is how you have to see when it comes to operating system now at this juncture now you keep tracking from 1950s vacuum tubes transistors integrated chips very large scale integrated chips as the technology in hardware is changing the size of the computing devices also changing as a result of it the nature of the operating system is also continuously evolving in today's class we stop here in next class we continue with the next chapter up to now if i revise we have seen from the class 1 what is computer definition computer architecture how it looks what is input what is output device hardware software and different types of memory data representation binary ones and zeros how decimal system can be transformed into binary system how binary number can be converted into decimal system all these things so far in computers we have seen most of the questions will come up to now because this is the how this is the fundamental up to here and from next class onwards we will see the small applications like microsoft word how word look like what are the basic commands to run word likewise some other components we will see in computers but up to now try to read try to revise watch videos you can use any kind of book arihant book is one in one book which is given very systematically you can read it along with our classes thank you thank you very much i will see you in the next class hello students good evening to everyone we are continuing the computers class in the last uh, four classes we have seen like uh, what is the computer what is the architecture of the computer broadly we have two components in computer system that is software and hardware when it comes to software yesterday we have seen operating system in operating system this is the program this program controls hardware as well as various other softwares also computer programs are set of instructions combination of these computer programs are called a software operating system is a kind of software so operating system is an example of system software now we are talking about software set of instructions these instructions if are they are there in a systematic way we can call it as a computer program machines also need a certain kind of language which they understand we human beings also need one kind of language to communicate when it comes to computer languages broadly there are two types of languages low level language and high level language when it comes to low level language it is the language used by the machines in one of the classes we have seen data presentation or data representation in data representation computers always use zeros and ones for the communication always you need to remember this architecture as long as you are studying computers this is control unit arithmetic logic unit then memory unit this should be always remembered everywhere it comes 
it takes input and it gives output input is something which takes data from the human user and output is something which data is converted to information that information is visible to the user yesterday we have seen in operating system these operating systems in the initial stages of computer evolution in 1940s vacuum tubes were there huge these operating systems were utilized just to run one program and one user at a time later evolution came more and more users can log into the same system and also same user single user can do multiple tasks that is called multitasking yesterday we have seen unix is a kind of operating system linux is a kind of operating system windows one kind of macintosh os mac os one kind of operating system all these things are written in a program called computer programming today we see some basic details about computer programming when it comes to examination simply they'll ask broad definitions and nothing to worry much about computer because we are not here to study about what are the concepts of a particular computer program just we are going to learn there are different types broadly high level and low level exam will ask like which of the following is a high level which of the following is a low level computer program like that let us see this three categories of languages programming concepts programming languages everything whatever you are communicating in this central processing unit computer machines don't understand on their own we have to tell them each and every instruction step by step then only computers will understand properly that instruction has to be written in such a way that this step by step algorithm should be easier for the computer to understand also at the same time for humans also it is easy it should be easy to understand by the human user also then only we can communicate with the computers if we don't understand it it becomes very difficult to communicate with the systems broadly there are three types particularly this medium level there is no specific segment as such broadly to low level language low level language another one is high level language simply in other terms we can say when it comes to low level the language which is used by the computer architecture computer control unit arithmetic and logic unit they understand the digits ones and zeros this is the only language used by the computers we have seen here ones and zeros means it is not actually one and zero it is simply a transistor switch on a transistor switch off whatever coding we are giving whatever program instructions we are giving it manipulate the electrical status of the transistors millions of transistors are there some are going to get the light they are on they all represent ones some are going to do some do not get the electricity then becomes off when they become off that becomes zero this is how computers will only understand the electrical status so it passes the information if it is off if it is zero it won't so in that way computers whatever the language at this stage at the very core of the computer we call low level very low level that means computers can understand at the ones and zeros very low level this is what low level but ones and zeros we human beings cannot understand we have seen decimal system if it is a nine when it comes to binary system this is binary system that is represented by different ones and zeros if you go on tell this number is equivalent to decimal system something else if you want to understand 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 power 2 2 power 3 2 power 4 
जीरो इंटू टू पावर जीरो जीरो इंटू टू पावर वन वन इंटू टू पावर टू वन इंटू टू पावर थ्री वन इंटू टू पावर फोर सो इफ यू कैलकुलेट लाइक दैट यू विल गेट द डेसिमल नंबर बट इन डेसिमल सिस्टम दिस इज ए फाइव डिजिट नंबर दैट मीनिंग इज डिफरेंट इन बाइनरी सिस्टम दैट मीनिंग इज डिफरेंट दिस हैज ए काइंड ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन बट फॉर ह्यूमन्स ए डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन द लॉन्गवेजेस विच यूज बाय ह्यूमन बींग्स वुड कॉल फॉर ईजी पर्पज हाई लेवल एट वेरी हाई लेवल वी यूज दिस कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम्स बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट ऑलवेज connect with the computers with the ones and zeros only we have our own language like common english language we write something in common english language again computers will not understand these letters a b c d s there sh do, there should be something other kind of program which translate this english language to the ones and zeros this is how the computer languages will keep on operating computer program we have seen yesterday also set of instructions in a programming language for a computer to execute any task whatever task we are giving to the computer it has to perform according to the instructions written in any particular kind of language suppose low level language there are two types of languages one is machine language this language contains only one and zero suppose if i write something If I is equal to zero, print hello. This is the language. If condition print, these are normal alphabets in English. This computer do not understand. It converts into zero zero one zero 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 one 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 something like that. It will change according to. its own understanding this is called machine language you will see only ones and zeros but here we will see different things only one and zero that is a machine language only understood by machines we cannot uh, understand suppose if someone says even if someone doesn't know computer language at least they can recognize what is i what is f what is zero equal p r i n t co double colon open bracket like that they may not know what exactly this particular instruct this is a kind of instruction what this instruction will do in computer people may not know but at least they can recognize the letters that something is equivalent to english but here we can recognize only zeros ones ones but we don't know what this means what this means what this overall meaning is only systems will understand this is converted to this in this way machines language will work machine code different types of names are there machine code object code binary language whatever code that is converted to in this form this is only ones and zeros binary code object code or machine code there is a second type of language it is somewhat more better understood by the human beings it is somewhat close to human language but machine language is always ones and zeros uses structured commands better understood by humans than machine language acts as an interface with the computer hardware computer hardware we have seen input devices and output devices when it comes to input devices keyboard mouse scanner different types of input devices output devices monitor is there printer is there speaker is there so likewise different there should be some kind of communication mechanism among these hardwares these assembly language will help because it little bit understood by the humans directly it's better than machine language but this also has to be converted into this to perform by the computer next one high level language when it comes to high level language simply it can be understood by the human beings these are various examples in different time periods they evolved for example if i give different time periods different time periods 
this is the language f o r t r a n fortran this meaning is formula translation fortran means formula translation it was developed in 1957 so these are high level languages so gradually human beings developed a kind of language which humans also can easily understand and there could some kind of mechanism also developed so that this human readable format can be converted into machine code formula translation 1957 it was developed by team at ibm this is how the evolution now algol the name itself is saying algorithmic language <coughs> this was developed in 1958 likewise co bol common business oriented language common business oriented language when it comes to examination <coughs> simply they will ask what is the full form of cobal what is the full form of fortran when it comes to examination you just need to understand what is the simple definition but here to understand computer's broad picture broad view i am giving you the evolution this cobal developed in 1959 so likewise continuously different type of languages for example here basic one computer program name itself basic beginners all purpose symbolic instruction code it was developed in 1964 then pascal 1970 c this is the real turning point in the computer languages because it has changed the way human took interest in the computer language so many applications uh, emerged out of this language c language before that there was a language language name itself a language name itself b depending on different kind of inventors they have given that particular names a b this became c language this is 1972 Dennis Ritchie he was the one who developed in Bell Labs If you remember Bell Labs was instrumental in developing Unix in 1969 In 1969 Unix operating system was evolved Now you can see Unix operating system it is a kind of operating system it requires some kind of language it must have been written whatever languages that existed before that one of the inventors of one of the developers of unix is the same person who worked on the development of c also his name is dennis ritchie so he was the person he was there in the development of unix also because bell laboratory is the same place he is the same person who developed c languages then c++ came 1985 then python this came in 1991 then java came 1995 java script these are various languages which human beings can understand they can write like in the normal english language these common english used terms again kind of mechanism is there which converts into machine ultimately it should go into the machine language ultimately it should turn into ones and zeros machine language that only computer can understand this is how different programs even recently also based on <coughs> python plus c++ combinedly one type of new language also recently emerged that is mojo 2023 recently 
probably one month ago they have released even less than in one month ago mojo so there are different type of programming languages keep coming evolving according to the nature of the computing system requirement of the requirement of the industry economic sphere different languages emerged so simply you can see these are the different variations when it comes to examination high level languages and low level languages now when it comes to language translator we have seen when it comes to system software there should be some kind of software which translate from one language to the other language these are high level languages computers cannot understand only ones and zeros that is why this language translator should be there language translator it is a kind of another program this itself is a program you can write any kind of instruction in one program again you have to write one more program which convert this program into machine and these are different translators are there first example is assembler is one example second language interpreter so this translator will convert assembly language we have seen machine level when it comes to low level one is machine level language machine language that is the utmost at the lowest level only computers understand another level we have seen assembly language again this assembly language also directly cannot be understood by the computers there should be some kind of mechanism which translate this assembly language into machine language this is called assembler when it comes to interpreter interpreter line by line it will convert for example if i take this particular this is line number 1 this is line number 2 then i can give line number 3 then print four so lines four lines are there each line converts into ones and zeros and if something goes wrong here the computer program will stuck it here if it is all right then it goes to the next level if it is all right it goes to the next level this line by line is called conversion of line by line is called interpreter this interpreter is a convert translator which translates line by line of high level languages to the low level language next example compiler this compiler this entire program is converted into this in one go when it comes to interpreter line by line but compiler it takes entire program and in one go it translates into this that is called compiler these are various different type of terminologies with respect to language translator so this is how you need to see and when it comes to generation of languages generations for example in computers evolution first generation of the computers vacuum tubes second generation transistors came third generation integrated chips fourth generation very large scale now fifth generation even beyond the very large scale computers are evolving similarly the generation different generations emerged out of this evolution of the languages the first generation languages are low level languages in the initial stage only machines can understand ones and zeros human beings also tried to talk with machines with ones and zeros only machine language low level because high level languages cannot be born in single go you need multiple set of instructions which convert high level to low level angle first one is low level which talks about the computer for example 
if we take this is computer hardware low level this is the first generation at the lowest level directly they started speaking with computers this is first generation when it comes to second generation naturally assembly language because it can be little bit understood by com human beings but again you need some other kind of programmer program that is assembler to translate this assembly language into low level machine language this is the second generation this is second generation now thereafter third generation fourth generation fifth generation the remaining programs high level languages depending on the complexity third generation fourth generation and presently fifth generation is working this is how different type of uh, different type of terminologies with respect to computer so this concept is also about simply programming concepts this is the basic concepts which you require for the examination these are different type of high level languages now if we see the difference between low level language and high level language these are the basic differences when it comes to low level hardware knowledge is required if you want to write low level language you have to write you have to understand the hardware according to the requirement of hardware ones and zeros you have to code it when it comes to high level language english language you can write normally you need not to worry what is exactly happens at the hardware level because this high level language anyway is going to be translated into this low level language by another program difficult to understand naturally for user human beings it's difficult to code in ones and zeros but when it comes to high level language c c++ java python anything high level language we can easily understand like easily understandable language english we can use it that is high level machine assembly languages the beginning stage first generation second generation they were examples of low level c c++ java python are examples of high level difficult to modify because if something happens if there is any error in the program you need to correct the program then it becomes very difficult to line by line interpret it exactly finding the error correcting it is becoming difficult when it comes to this it is like normal english you can seek the code and you can easily correct it easy to modify Trans translation is not required except this assembly language otherwise translation is not required here translation is definitely required otherwise these cannot be we human beings can understand this but machines will not understand this there should be some kind of translator that is either interpreter line by line or compiler entire code in one go that is required as a natural that here you don't require any translation also you don't require large set of instructions also and directly you are communicating with the computer less memory usage with the less amount of memory you can use this and it is natural that in the beginning stage of the computers the amount of memory is also very less computing speed is also less computing memory size also less accordingly these kind of languages emerged when it comes to this more memory usage is required because large number of instructions you have to write again these instructions have to be translated to the machine language again to interpret this you need your interpreter or compiler again you need other kind of instruction again it takes memory now so many calculations are there because of this it becomes slower and it is faster because less memory directly you talk with the computer directly whatever machine is almost understanding you will write the code that is faster but here it is slow because first we write in our own language second step conversion third step it has to be understood that's why this is slower in comparison with 
low level languages these are some different examples advantage same thing when it comes to advantage we human beings cannot understand low level languages ones and zeros always very very difficult to understand that's why high level languages are becoming very popular because everyone can easily understand it and they can write the code as a result more and more software professionals emerged after 1960s and 70s today india is also one of the leading producer or exporter of software in the world itself this is how high level this is thanks to the development of high level languages when it comes to medium level language there is no specific term as such but it is a kind of intermediary stage some languages they have low level features also high level features also high level features means which we can understand easily low level features means which machines can understand some programs they have inbuilt structure some commands some instructions which are close to the computer same language will have the instructions which are close to the human beings and those kind of examples we call medium level languages but same high level languages in the same for example c c++ java they are considered as high level also because they are containing some features which are close to the machine level that's why they are also considered as intermediary level or medium level language but broadly you can have two categories low level language and high level language so these are various two broad categories of computer languages low level and high level one is which directly understood by the computers second one we human beings only can understand machines will not understand them they have to be converted into the machine language they are called language translators so it is like when two human beings having two different languages there should be someone who translate this language to the that language same is the case with computers also all right this is how we need to see for example if i see questions how questions can be asked i will read one particular question a set of rules for telling the computer what operations to perform is called programming language next question the instructions that tell a computer how to carry out the processing tasks are referred to as computer programs so these are computer programs which are the instructions in whether it is low level or high level they are simply set of instructions set of instructions they these instructions will tell the computer what to do we are giving data in the form of data always you remember this whatever may be the development in computer world ultimately everything is operating on this architecture we are giving data we are getting the information how this data is becoming information some things happening that is we are giving some instructions how to convert this data into information these instructions are called computer programs and set of computer programs we call a software this is how different to understand to write these softwares we developed languages some are close to the computer some are close to the human beings close to human beings called a high level close to computer they are called low level high level cannot be understood by the computer you need translators either interpreter assembler or compiler they translate from high level to the low level machine level language one last question i will read the use of combination of ones and zeros the use of combination of ones and zeros is feature of which of the following type of computer language ones and zeros in which language we have that is only machine language answer here is here options are like c cobol machine language pascal high level languages simply machine language this is how questions are asked definition are simply the abbreviation 
or simply set of program, set of instructions are called which of the following programs. The language which uses only ones and zeros, machine level. The languages which use human-like uh, language, high-level languages. And interpreter, which interprets line by line. Compiler, it convert, translate into entire program into machine level. Assembler converts assembly language into machine level language. These are the some basic topics with respect to computer concepts. Today, we will stop the class here. Tomorrow, we will continue with the rest of the topics. And hereafter, there is nothing much already basic concept. Today also, if you see, we are talking about software only. So with yesterday itself, the core concepts ended. This is additional one. And tomorrow, we will try to wind up computer classes. Thank you. Hello, students. Good evening to all of you. We will see the rest of computer-related concepts. With today's class, we are going to finish the computer classes. Just for recap, I'm just giving you the idea that what we have seen earlier. First, we started in the first class with what is computer. Computer is an electronic device which performs certain operations. And we have seen one kind of architecture also. This architecture gives, as per the definition of computer, it takes the data and gives information after processing it. In the architecture also, we give the data to the computer to, through input, we get information at the output level. This process is done by, in the middle part, central processing unit. It has a control unit and ALU unit, arithmetic and logical unit. And it is supported by memory, because without memory, it cannot remember what should be done, what instruction should be performed one after the other. We have seen various memories, primary memory, secondary memory. When it comes to components of the computer, broadly we divided like hardware component, software component. Hardware we can see and touch. Software we cannot touch it, but this is very fundamental to integrate all the hardwares and other softwares. Software, nothing but a set of instructions. These set of instructions are written in different languages. This, we have seen different type of programming concepts. Some are called machine language. Machine level language means machines understand only ones and zeros. We have seen at a transistor level, at a hardware level, one means compute. Transistor receives electricity. Zero means it doesn't receive electricity. Ones and zeros. Because it's all about electricity states. These ones and zeros only two possibilities. That's why everything one and zero. That is machine language. But we human beings are not used to this kind of binary system. Since the ancient times, we are used to decimal system. Zero to nine, but not zeros and ones always. Hence, different levels of programming, higher level programs came. And higher level programs are translated to the machine level. Higher level, what we speak, are not understood by the computers. They have to be converted into ones and zeros. There, different language translators will come. Assembler, which is a translator, which translates assembly language into machine language. Interpreter. It takes line by line of higher level language, converts into ones and zeros. Compiler, another type of language translator, which it takes as a whole. Suppose if I say, you have written one essay. If you take entire essay, you will get one kind of interpretation. And one go, if you translate that entire essay into machine language, that is compiler is required. But if you translate every sentence in essay, First sentence, translation. Second sentence, translation. Third sentence, translation. This is interpreter. This is how different type of translators were helpful in converting what the language we can understand to the language what machines can understand. Operating system is one software which plays dominant role in controlling the hardware, other applications, and user and system interaction. 
now connected with these softwares we are going to see microsoft windows is an operating system microsoft office is a application software operating system is a system software system means at core level it handles hardware and software application software for a specific purpose some application general applications also can be developed by software when it comes to microsoft office like word then power presentation excel spreadsheet like that we will see some few details few details about microsoft windows it is an operating system we are very much used to this windows but hardly we know about the full form of windows in our kind in the examinations what you are preparing simple questions with respect to computer will come they will not go deep about the computers they simply broadly expect that minimum basics for example windows what windows stands for every one of us use windows but we don't know what the meaning of windows it is wide interactive network development for office work solution you can see the term <coughs> office work solution if you get connected to the particular term office office the terminology related to windows becomes easier for us this is office work solution this is software aimed at providing some kind of solution which is useful for performing office tasks now you imagine in general in any office we have one desk people sit suppose if you become provident fund officer then you will be given a desk on desk different files will be there what these files contains these files contains about various beneficiaries of provident fund then you have to look into these files and you will correct you will sign it and all related files you will keep in a folder so that they are not misplaced they are should be stored properly in separate folders this is generally in human every human experience in office one desk will be there on desk files will be there these files are kept in folders and when you require you open the folder you take the file you study it once again after doing some work again you will keep in the folder the similar concept this is the outward experience of human beings this outward experience translated to the operating system level through windows now we see some of the terminologies used by windows operating system also looks similar way these are various versions we have seen operating systems unix 1969 then mac os came windows came linux came often they used to improve the performance and used to improve if there is any bug error they used to correct it and they release newer version these are various versions from 1985 onwards you can continuously see that as of now windows 11 so windows 10 windows 11 these are the existing versions of windows every now and then they used to work on it they improve the performance they improve the look and feel they bring new version this is how it came in versions this is the logo they used since the beginning 85 to 2015 windows 10 looks like this this is about different versions now whenever this version one version is gone now it is available in the latest version means every system has to update update means to get new version and user operating system needs an update because exams will come like this if you want to move from one version to the other version which of the following operations are performed update changes in computer applications may happen so because of that you need continuous update new hardwares may come in order to handle the new hardwares for example in 20 30 years ago mobile phones were not common today we are smartphones 
and windows when in 1985 windows started it was not having any compatibility with windows uh, mobiles because we don't know a new hardware will come in future likewise since 85 so many hardwares emerged as the technology progress new hardwares will come these hardware has to be updated accordingly software is updated this is all then when it comes to the present generation social media is very common in order to support social media to fix the bug latest trends they used to update it as i said when you go to the office office contains a desk in on the desk so many files folders likewise they also in their terminology microsoft windows also used the similar kind of terminology they use desktop desktop means it looks like this suppose if i go to this this is how desktop what we are calling this how it looks this is windows and whatever we are seeing when you start operating system windows operating system it comes like this this is what we call desktop similar to the language of office then these icons these are called these graphical representations of different aspects on this they are called icons they are also folders folders are there and if you go to folder you will find many files subfolders in subfolders you will find other files likewise similar kind of terminology entered into the microsoft windows operating system desktop first screen displayed on monitor when we turn on icon graphical pictures that represent an object like file folder for example you can see these are various types of objects these various types of objects can be seen as icons computer it is one symbol it is one icon recycle bin one icon network edge google chrome control panel different icons now task bar the task bar which we see at the bottom a long horizontal bar at the bottom is task bar task bar on task bar we keep all the important applications where we are working task menu bar each window contains on its own menu contains menu it will come this menu suppose if i open this now you can see there is a menu bar this contains file home share view according to the requirement of this folder different type of menus are there so likewise some kind of terminology is related to windows task bar some basic programs are also will be there like whenever you are working in the office you may need some kind of pad that pad you will write note you will note down something notepad similarly there is another application they named that application as notepad you can write you can write whatever you want to write paint is another kind calculator is another application media player it's another application which requires to open so one text work image work mathematics works and media video works different sorts of files different sorts of requirements microsoft windows created applications again whatever we are listening here say everything has to be given set of instructions every instruction has to be stored in memory arithmetic logic unit and control unit has to retrieve that information and perform what this program is saying to central processing unit files these are the basic unit to store data files are basic unit to store data 
different type of files will come that extension we call .dx, .txt extension, .html, HTML web pages, dot. To show different type of file name, dot extension will come based on that nature of the file, whether it is text file, whether it is image file, whether it is video file, we come to know based on this extension. Containers, these are the folders. Folders contain set of these folders, files. They store files also, folders also, subfolders also. Some shortcuts like if you want to select all, control A, delete, F3 search, some of the shortcuts, this you can study in Arihant book. It is a good book. You can read. It's a good book, properly compiled for the examination. Whatever basics are required, it is sufficient. Folders, shortcuts. Microsoft Office. When we see Office, again, when one Office contains different nature, different types of works will be there. An officer may require certain kinds of spreadsheet or accounting mechanism so that they can calculate how much money employee provident fund, every month how much interest or every year how much interest is accrued, then after 10 years how much you have to sum, you have to submit or perform the basic interest. So likewise, you need to have certain kind of operations, certain kinds of basic mathematics. And you need to type, write about the employee basic details, Likewise, depending on the nature of different natures of the work across the globe, they broadly categorized into these and they created applications like this. Word for word processing, Excel for spreadsheet, PowerPoint, like whatever you are seeing here, this is PowerPoint application. Access for a database, Outlook for sending email. Likewise, different type of applications. Microsoft Windows operating system on top of that Windows operating system. Some application softwares also emerged. These application softwares are very, very useful in day-to-day -day work of the offices. Everyone, almost entire universe uses these applications every day. Because the work nature is like that, we definitely use all of them or some of them every time. Database. If I take the example of employee provident fund itself, you need to have some kind of database about the beneficiaries. This data also has to be organized very systematically. Otherwise, retrieving data, managing data, processing data becomes very difficult. Over a period of time, initially computers were not supportive. But as computers were evolving, they were getting more and more memory unit. As a result, more and more innovations emerged in organizing the data also. Database was one such component of the software development where database is one kind of software. Database is a collection of logically related information in an organized way. Suppose if I write this one, employee. Provident fund, employee, any kind of employee. So let us take employee details. If you want to disburse the fund for 100 employees about provident fund, you will have employee name. If I write in the table format, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, likewise 100 people, they will have employee ID. ID can be 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something, number. Then basic details like address. Address will be there. Then bank name, to which bank you need to disburse. Likewise, we will organize the data. These organized data if we take such kind of data at all levels, that becomes one database. There are certain terms associated with this. Data. Data is the raw and unorganized fact that needs to extract information. For example, similarly here, 
we have employee name employee id and interest we enter all the basic details in this same is the case with the student different student name different marks how many marks a student got in different subjects that is the raw data when it comes to information if you average it how much average of score a student is getting in all the subjects or what is the total amount of score you got that is information we get but basic data is raw data these are the terms which are associated with the database they are called components of database whatever data we give is organized in tables like this this is what table and each and every column this we call field address field bank field interest field employee id name it is the field name overall a table that is the field collection of data items in all fields suppose for employee x if you collect all this information this is called a record so this entire is table this is a field one particular row this row gives you the information about one particular employee name address bank details interest then second row means second record second record gives the full information about second employee to get the information this is how inside the software our data is stored but there should be a mechanism how to retrieve the data we should ask the question to the computer that i need for this person all the details this questioning is called query generally english term querying mean queries are there means some questions are there query these are the questions based on data we query it we get the information of course everything has to be written in a systematic set of records the computer language when it comes to database applications banking reservation universities credit card finance multiple without database nowadays no application will run database management means overall term for creating these tables editing these tables formatting it storing and retrieving a text all these operations were called database management examples like dbase oracle mysql these are there are so many n number of database applications these applications are utilized by different organizations different people to organize their respective data next part we need to see about communication communication and networking as of now we have seen only one type of computer one input one computer architecture means input section then central processing unit then output now what happens if such kind of computers are connected together if one computer is connected with other computer can we communicate as of now till the since first class to up to now i am focusing only on how we human beings communicate with computer giving input processing it getting information now one computer if we connect with other computer how what we have to see what developments will happen communication will take place between two computers the communication means sending or receiving information on one side one computer on this side other computer if both are connected one computer send information other computers receive information this is called communication sending or receiving information is called communication network is a collection of two or more computers two computers or more computers if you connect them that becomes a network what happens if you take one particular computer forget about second computer in one computer just now we have seen in microsoft ms office or microsoft windows we have folders it is like one office and other office if both are connected what happens you your office contains one desk it contains folders files other office may contain similar kind of architecture they have set of folders and files if communication starts 
one person send the file other person receive the file then response response will come by correction or any acknowledgement will come from the other side same is the case files can be shared folders can be shared videos can be shared any type of data which requires uh, to be transferred it can be transferred from one place to the other place similarly it is like postal system for example since ancient times we have postal system if you want to send information from one person to the other person postal service is there likewise this network helps to send information from one computer to the other computer broadly two types of networks are there lan local area network if it is very small area small number of computers local area network if it is a very big area then if you connect geographically very widespread that becomes wan simply if you connect multiple lans it become wide area network so in one local network area three computers one server different computers are connected see this kind of lan if 2 3 4 5 are there if they are connected that becomes wide area network simply connection between different computers local area network local area network connecting these two becomes wide area network this computer can send file to here this computer can send file to here when it comes to this network let us assume this network is not only about one particular laboratory or one particular university let us assume entire globe if computers across the planet are connected that becomes internet internet here world wide network of computers world wide computers are connected to this networking initially in 1969 now you can see in 1969 computers are just emerging it was the time connection between two computers or few computers also emerged we have seen in 1940s vacuum tubes huge computers and the time computers itself very huge connection was very difficult slowly slowly that became common practice in 1960s 70s due to transistors small computers micro computers mini computers mainframe computers likewise emerged these computers were there in different universities for a defense purpose us defense purpose in order to send information from one computer to the other computer dev defense and different universities connected that was the beginning of internet in 1969 advanced research projects agency network or panet this is the beginning and today whole globe is connected to this internet protocol again similar to understand human language and machine language there should be set of instructions machine level ones and zeros only they can understand similarly when one computer send the signal to the other computer there should be some kind of set of rules these rules we call protocol for communication it is a set of rules that need to be followed by the communicating parties in order to have successful and reliable data communication communication has to be one message has to be sent to the other computer other computer should give response or acknowledgement that whether that computer received information or not how do we know if i send my computer send signal to the second computer second computer should give the acknowledgement that whether it received or not if it receive successfully then some kind of status if it doesn't receive or full information is not received a different kind of signal will come all these were part of this protocol set of rules now when more and more computers emerged new kind of threat also emerged that became very very severe nowadays that is security cyber security also called it security information technology security suppose if your computer is there you can store your sensitive information sensitive files folders it's like one office is there if no one is allowed then information will be safe whatever files folders everything are safeguarded no intrusion no outsider no one can allowed to take the sensitive information from the office but if you allow this office open to everyone then everyone anyone can come anyone can go 
then what happens at some point of time malicious people you can say not everyone with, will have the intention to do something harm but some malicious people with malicious intent they may try to destroy these uh, files or folders same thing happened here also when computers are connected multiple computers are connected there are some people with malicious intention they want to steal the sensitive information and they want to destroy the opponent's business there are multiple malicious intentions based on that they used to create different set of programs these computers will go to the opponent computer and they will destroy that some examples are virus worm trojan spyware different type of these malwares malware means malicious software software we know software set of instructions set of computer programs if the same program is done with malicious intention that becomes a malware this software why software we developed in the initial place for proper integration of hardware and software together so that we human beings will get the best result out of the computer but if with malicious intention someone creates a software which may destroy the input devices may destroy the output devices may steal the information from the computer likewise they damage steal sensitive information delete information data for example if nuclear facilities are there nowadays nuclear facilities are also run by the computers if someone who doesn't like nuclear weapon nuclear reactors they can create a software and if if they are able to enter into the system then they can damage any information they can blast the nuclear stations also they can delete some information so that the next time when it is switched on the it may not be functioning dysfunctional takes place that is how software on one hand software industry is booming the security concern about it industry is also growing nowadays virus is one malware virus means vital information resources under seas important information is under seas that is virus they are copies itself and adjacent to other programs they attach to other computers so that the computer program the original goal of the program will completely alter it will not perform the computer programs will not perform properly worm trojan horse spyware are some other examples for example worm the primary difference between virus and worm is that virus must be triggered by the activation for their host of their host only if you click on it if you run the program virus will spread start spreading but when it comes to worm stand alone malicious program that can self replicate and propagate independently as soon as they have breached the system in case of virus you need to activate without activation also once it reach, breaches the system a worm can destroy or damage the computer trojan horse means generally it came from the ancient epic troy trojan horse it appears like a good program but indirectly behind the scene it used to steal the information it does malicious work that is how trojan horse means outside it looks like a horse which is useful but indirectly it is doing some harmful task that is trojan horse likewise different kinds of malware malware means malicious software adware is one thing advertising software nowadays so many advertisements are happening because of this they are they used to create software that we call adware spyware is like adware once it enters into the system it silently keeps on sending the sensitive information to the other computer this is one of the major issues when it comes to the cyber security or it security these things you have to connect with uh, some current affairs with the latest developments but broadly what is a computer information and data what is the architecture input 
central processing unit and output, hardware and software component, hardware contain input devices, output devices, software, system software, application software, then operating system we have seen dedicatedly, Windows operating system, one example, MS Office like document, Excel sheet, spreadsheet, PowerPoint or some other applications. Then when two computers are connected, it becomes network. In network, they need communication set of rules. These rules are called protocol. When we connect the computers across the globe, that becomes internet. It evolved from 1969 onwards. Today it became huge network of computers. But as the networks are growing, security threats are also growing. Some of the examples of malwares like virus, worm, trojan horse and spyware. These are some of the latest internet of things. Internet of things means now so many digital gadgets are coming. Computers, mobile phones, so many other gadgets are also coming like even watches also with the computing power. So watches, smartphone, computer, now all these things are going to be connected through internet work. That is how this is a network of the things, internet of things. You can operate your computer from your watch. Your watch will be operated from your computer. Your smartphone can be used as a remote control to switch on your TV Likewise, you can do multiple things if they are interconnected. So it is like your own hardware devices are connected. This becomes internet of things. New level, advanced level, now it is emerging trend, artificial intelligence. Now you can see how computers are evolving over a period of time. In the initial days, computers were so big. They cannot do anything without giving particular instruction. Only if you give instruction, then they perform that kind of operation only. When it comes to artificial intelligence, computers will start analyzing it data on its own. Human beings will give some broad outline. They will not code line by line what computer has to do. Of course, come artificial intelligence also, to emerge this kind of technology, you have to code, you have to give the instructions to the computer but not the way we are giving so far. So far you need to specify everything, but in artificial intelligence, you will give broad outlines. Based on that broad outline, computers will understand what the intention of the human beings and they will start performing the activities watch human beings are thinking. This is how artificial intelligence trend is growing. This is going to be very big major thing in the coming future decades. This is how computers and evolution of the computers, different basic concepts. You need not to be afraid of computers at all. Questions are very, very basic. If you completely leave, then you will lose four to five questions which are very, very easy. Don't think that all 100% questions you are going to answer. Because some difficult questions will, will come, but it is a competitive exam. In competitive exam, if you are relatively higher, then you will clear the examination. That relativity depends on easiness and difficulty. There are some questions which are very difficult, all people cannot answer them. But there are certain questions very easy. Those who look at the computer syllabus, broad concepts, they will be able to answer them. But if you are afraid of computers and if you leave this particular portion completely, you will lose those four to five questions, which can be answered very easily just by going through the basic fundamentals. The purpose of these classes is to give you that idea. And within this framework, try to read book, any book, there are different books. I can say Arihant book, you can use the book. You will get different uh, other factual part also. In this framework, you can try to remember that. In these classes also, I have given you so many facts and how questions are also asked and how can be asked also, I have given this. Use this framework, read Arihant, then your computers, questions are not going to be difficult one.
in today's class we will stop here and with this our classes on computers also ending all the best take care thank you thank you very much